Let's talk about the three innate characteristics of women. This is true of all women. Doesn't matter where in the world they are, if Asia, South America, North America, Africa, Australia, it doesn't matter, okay? Um, you ask any guy that's traveled around the world and seen enough women in different places in the world, they'll start to tell you that they're pretty much all going to behave in a very similar fashion. You know, there's there's always somebody out there that's going to sell you some narrative like, oh, you got to go to this car country or this part of the world and they're just better. Or there's unicorns in this part of the world. No, there's just women in a different part of the world from a different culture that speak a different language with different style and different, you know, um, societal programmings, but they're still women. Women are still women. They all have the same hardwiring. You know, they all have the same firmware and they all have the same hardware, <laughs> you know, on the outside when we talk about hardware and software. Anyway, um, yeah, dudes, dudes saying straight up, lived in three continents, agrees. So the first characteristic, the main innate characteristic that you got to understand is hypergamy, which uh, I've talked about before. Um, if you want to know all the ins and outs and nitty gritty of hypergamy, uh, Rolo Tomasi is the man to watch on that. But um, the nuts and bolts of it really are is a woman needs to believe that every day when she gets up in the morning, I mean, this is the way I sum it up anyway. When, when she gets up in the morning, that you're the best that she can do. She's got to look at you day in, day out, week in, week out, month in, month out, year in, year out, and think to herself, this dude's the best that I can do. My hypergamy satisfied. This is not what she's thinking, but this is the mechanics of it. She's satisfied with you, right? She digs your vibe. She sees you as a competent man with skills. Uh, she looks at you um, and thinks that you're attractive and wants to jump your bones. There's there's a lot of things that come into play, but that's really what hypergamy boils down to is, is this guy the best I can do? If she starts feeling like you're not the best that she can do, and let's say, I don't know, maybe Kevin from sales or Steve from accountings, giving her a lot of attention and they're handsome men <clears throat> and they're chads and they have like the standard high testosterone cues, chiseled jaws, deep voice, you know, masculinity, all that sort of stuff. Um, and she thinks that she can do better than you. Well, maybe the clock might start ticking down. I'm not saying it's going to tick down and there's going to be an end of the relationship, but there are a lot of things that can start to happen, which lead down towards that. Um, what else can we cover with hypergamy? Yeah, that would be the, that would be the, the, like the nitty gritty of it. I mean, there's different things to consider different times, you know, different times of the month when women are in different parts of their cycle and there's parts of their cycle, like when they're ovulating, when they seek high testosterone cues and more alpha cues, there's times in their cycle when they're menstruating and they're not, and they're looking for more safety cues and more beta bucks. You know, we talk about alpha seed and beta need. So there's little parts of hypergamy that break down to different types of equations, but I think it's widely accepted now. Um, and it, and this isn't just TRP, like, you know, the red pill sort of stuff, but I think it's widely accepted even in Evo psych, um, authors, uh, you know, you take a look at any of these guys that have put out some great Evo psych books. And by the way, all of my recommended books are going to be pinned in the top comment below. So if you're watching a replay, I can't post it before the show for some reason anymore. Now they don't let you, um, but always in the pinned top comment of all my videos, you'll see my Amazon link. And that's where I recommend the books. There's some stuff in there from Evo psych that'll blow your mind. Um, it's widely accepted that women are, are hypergamous. That's it. And don't believe any of the crap like, well, men are too, or men are hypogamous, or they make up some other shit to like, try to like cope with it all. It's like, just understand that women don't like to date across and down on the socioeconomic scale. Their preference is to date across and up on the socioeconomic scale. There's always some Muppet that comes out of the woodwork later on. It's like, you know, some comment like, I've been married for 25 years and, you know, my husband makes less than me and he was a stay at home dad and I went to work and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, all right, okay, let's take a look at that. Because there are instances where women do or become the bread earners, you know, um, they'll go out and they'll get the bacon and she'll bring it home and he'll cook it up, sort of thing. Um, that does happen from time to time. But often when you look at the dynamics of those relationships, you also have to consider, does she have any options? You know, like, does she have the option to leave, leave this guy? Is she beautiful? Does she have beauty cues? Is she fit? Like, you know, is she, or is she obese? You know, um, there's a lot of things to consider. But again, you know, when I said earlier, when I kind of started this off, this is like 95% of what you need to know. Okay. Like there's some intricacies here and there, which, 
oh, but there's an exception or there's this, that, or the other thing. Fine. Okay, cool. Awesome. <laughs> this is again, 95% of what you need to know. So that's hypergamy. Uh, 